you guys are thinking about possibly using SARMs. Well, you made it to the right place because in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about SARMs as well as some information that you should definitely know and consider if you are thinking about using products like this. There are all different types of SARMs out there on the market today. And there's also a lot of things that people think are SARMs that actually technically are not SARMs, it's like MK677, just as a you know, prime example. There's a lot of different SARMs that are gonna do different things. Some are gonna help you build muscle. Some are gonna help you retain muscle while you're in a calorie deficit. Some may be able to help you burn fat. Some, some people will use to help get bigger or grow stronger. So there's different SARMs for different reasons. And where you wanna start is where everyone seems to get a little confused. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about a little bit of a beginner's guide to SARMs, some basic information that you guys need to know, as well as some things to maybe consider and look at before you get started. Go ahead and grab yourself a hot cup of coffee, a protein shake, maybe a hot meal. Let's sit down today and talk about SARMs. All right, guys, so if you are in the beginning stages of SARMs, chances are, you've heard about these things, you're doing maybe a little bit of research on these things, you're not really sure where to start or which ones to use or which ones to consider. I'm not here to tell you guys to use SARMs. I'm just here to tell you guys that there is a lot of information about these that you should definitely know and consider before you go and get started. The first one that I want to kind of briefly discuss is going to be MK677, just because it's the most popular, it seems like right now, in the entire SARM industry. Even though MK677 is not a SARM, it's technically a growth hormone secretagogue. Now here at Performance Labs, which is the company that I own, we call MK677 methodical, as you guys can see here, and it's available in capsules and liquids. MK677 is great because it will not directly impact your natural production of testosterone. Unlike other types of products or other SARMs that will definitely impact your natural production of testosterone, and that's something that you guys have to consider. If you are not on testosterone or TRT or some type of testosterone in general, then you're gonna put yourself at a massive risk because SARMs, they have the ability to shut down your natural production of testosterone. So if you're not on testosterone and you wanna use SARMs, you need to also get and understand what a PCT is. PCT stands for post-cycle therapy. Now, a PCT, a proper PCT that actually works, something like in Clomiphene for an example, which we do also carry at Performance Labs, will definitely help reboot your natural production of testosterone. Although there's never a full 100% guarantee, it will definitely help make sure that your natural production does not just completely quit on you and that you don't fall back down to a zero total testosterone level. We definitely don't want that because that's gonna make you lose gains. It's gonna make it very hard to keep progressing if that happens. So so make sure that if you're not using testosterone, you consider a post-cycle therapy and you have that already in your arsenal at your disposal so that you can use it if you need it. The good news is that if you are on TRT or testosterone in general, you will not need a PCT at that point if you're planning on staying on testosterone because that testosterone that you're injecting is going to keep those levels stable for you so that you don't have to worry about being completely shut down because regardless, testosterone that you're injecting is already gonna shut you down, so you're gonna need that testosterone in there to keep your levels up and elevated. So that's definitely a big thing to consider when you're going into this. Now, another question that I get asked a lot is, Nick, what's the difference between capsules and liquids? You guys, there is no difference. The absorbency from liquids and capsules is gonna be damn near identical, okay? The only time that using a liquid comes into play is if you want dosages smaller than the capsules will provide, okay? So just to give you guys a rough example, my execution here, my execution is Rad 140. Now, the capsules come in 15 milligrams per capsule. This means that you're stuck using these things in 15 milligram increments. Now, in Rad 140's case, that's fine because Rad 140 is used anywhere between 15 to 30 milligrams daily. But some people may want 20 or 25 milligrams daily or you know something of that nature, maybe 10 milligrams daily to start out with. This is where liquids come in handy because the liquids give you the ability to properly measure the liquid yourself and control the dosage just a little bit better. The downside to liquids is that they don't always taste the best, but the other plus side to liquids is, personally, I feel like they are gonna be a little bit less 
uh, effective on your liver and kidney enzymes because of the way that they're taken. Typically, people that choose to use liquids will put them underneath their tongue, hold it for about 10 seconds, and then rinse it down with a little bit of juice or water or something of that nature, because again, the liquids don't always taste that great. So I hope that part answers your question over the capsules and liquids debate, right? There's not gonna be any significant difference outside of those two little factors that we talked about. So if you're considering SARMs and you're looking at the same product as liquid or capsules, it's completely gonna be a personal preference. As for me personally, I like the capsules. I think the capsules work really well. They're very easy to take. I don't have to worry about measuring out liquids and putting things under my tongue and mixing them with water and all of this stuff. But it's completely your decision. I just wanna be here to tell you guys that there's not gonna be a difference, okay? We offer both that performance labs because I want people to be able to have that preference and be able to choose which one that they like. To be honest, both of them sell extremely well, liquids and capsules. So it's probably a good 50-50 mix. So there's no right or wrong answer to this. Pick the one that you're most comfortable with and then go for that. Now, when considering SARMs and trying to figure out what you wanna use and you know what would be good, what would fit your goals and stuff like that, you have to understand that every SARM has a little bit of a different purpose and every SARM is going to work a little bit different than other ones as far as their effectiveness and their strength, right? If you're trying to build strength and that's your number one goal, size and strength, then you should probably consider the SARMs that are meant to do that, okay? So a couple of them that are meant to do that is going to be RAD 150, which we call Triumph. That would be something to consider and do some research on. Um, LGD, which is actually a little bit stronger than RAD in most cases, according to the research that I've read, all right? And LGD is going to be a compound that's going to help massively improve muscle mass, strength, energy, performance, all of that stuff. So LGD would be another one that maybe consider and look at. Then we have things like we call execution, which is RAD 140. Again, RAD 140 and RAD 150 are gonna be very similar as far as their effectiveness and how they work, but they're both gonna help you build size or strength or muscle and stuff like that if that's what you're looking to achieve. Now, since we just talked about RAD 140 and RAD 150, let's quickly go over what the difference is between those two compounds just for the ones that are asking. RAD 150 is a newer version of RAD 140. It's supposed to be more bioavailable, so that means it's gonna be you know, easier for your body to utilize, which also can make the compound a little bit safer according to research. That's about the really only difference outside of half-life. I believe RAD 150 is just a little bit longer than RAD 140 as far as half-life goes. But outside of those things, it's basically gonna be the same compound. RAD 140 has been around a lot longer. A lot of people trust it because it has been around longer and more people have used it with good results. But RAD 150 is making a good uh, a good line in the sand here, right? Like it's it's getting more and more popular and it's it's here to show people that, hey, I'm here, I work, I'm effective, and you know, check me out. So it's up to you as far as which one of those things you may wanna consider or research. I like something that's been around longer that has a proven you know, history and track record behind it. So if it was me, I would personally go for RAD 140, but that's just me. You have to do your own research and figure out which one that you want. Regardless, these three compounds are, are going to be super effective at helping you build muscle mass. So if you're trying to build muscle mass and get stronger, those would be ones that I would highly look at and consider. Yes, there are other ones, but I'm just going over these as a quick example. So what about if you're not trying to necessarily get big or grow muscle mass right now? What if you're trying to just retain as much muscle as possible and be able to try to drop a little bit of body fat? Well, in that case, there are other ones that you may want to consider doing some research on on your own. The first one is going to be one of my personal favorites. We call it Crusade, but this is known as SR9009. Now, SR9009 is going to speed up the body's metabolic rate. If you guys don't understand what that means, your metabolic rate is the amount of calories you burn at rest, okay? So it's gonna speed that up. It's gonna increase that number, allowing you to burn more calories than you normally would, especially during exercise or just throughout the day in general to help you achieve that weight loss goal. There are definitely some side effects of this one. I'm not gonna get into each and everything you know, specifically, but you guys can do some research on SR9009. Just keep in mind, this one was meant to help you achieve the goal of losing body fat. Another one that you may want to look at and consider is going to be S4, which we call Quest. S4 is a really great and popular compound that's going to help you retain muscle mass as well as give you a little bit more of an aesthetic looking physique while also helping you burn some body fat and increase your overall performance so that you can train longer, train harder, and things like that. There's also what we call Conquer. Now, Conquer is GW501516, otherwise known as Cartery. Carterine is one of the leading 
uh, products in this space at helping you increase your overall physical performance, your overall physical endurance, helping you train longer, train harder, recover faster, and things like that. Anybody that's looking to increase their athletic performance overall is using Carterine, and they're doing research on Carterine, and they're looking into it. So if you're one of those types of people, then Carterine may be an option for you to consider and look at, assuming that you're trying to burn some body fat, as well as you know increase your overall ability to train longer and harder. Carterine has a proven track record at helping people get leaner. You just gotta do some research on it on your own and decide what's gonna work for you. The whole point of me showing you guys that there are specific compounds meant for bulking and then there are specific compounds meant for more cutting, I do that on purpose because I don't want you guys taking compounds that are meant for you to bulk and gain size and strength if you're trying to get lean, lose body fat, and you know build a little bit of muscle and increase endurance and things like that. These things have different reasons for use. So make sure you are fully understanding what compounds that you're, you're looking at and what the goal is so that you get the right compound for the right goal that you're trying to achieve and that you're not mixing these two things up. Regardless of which compounds you guys decide to go with, there is a big rule of thumb that I wanna to talk to you guys about. When it comes to dosages on SARMs, you guys are gonna see numbers all over the place. You're gonna see people that say, hey, I take five milligrams of Rad 140, or I take 30 milligrams of Rad 140, okay? Just as an example. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is that with SARMs, there is no written rule, okay? These are not prescription medications. These are technically research compounds, and you're the lab rat. It's your decision to use these compounds. I can't tell you what to use or what to do or anything like that. I can just give you guys a basic guideline that most people do so that you have that information and don't hurt yourself. My advice is that if you are going to consider using SARMs in any capacity, start low. Anything new that you're gonna put into your body, you should always start low. Don't just go based off what other people are doing, okay? You don't understand how long someone has been doing things, what their overall experience is, what their level of, you know, of fitness is in general. So it's always going to be in your best interest to start low. So let's use MK, okay, which is my methodical as an example, just because it's gonna be one of our most popular products and you know one of the most popular products in this space in general. MK is traditionally dosed anywhere between 15 to 30 milligrams like we discussed earlier. Does that mean you should start at 30 milligrams? No. That means you should start at least at 15 milligrams and give it some time to see how it's going to affect you. How's it gonna make you feel? Is it actually working at that level? Because if you feel a difference and you're gaining in, in, you know, or you're dropping fat or building muscle and making progress at that amount, there's not gonna be a need for you personally to go up to 30 milligrams unless you really, really wanna push it. The best thing you can do is get the most amount of benefits from the least amount of stuff as possible. And that's not just for SARMs, that's for steroids, gear, you know, anabolics, whatever you guys wanna call those as well. This goes for anything in the performance enhancing space. Start low, work your way up as you go through the cycle, especially if it's your first go around with a particular compound, because you want to know how it's going to affect you, how it's gonna make you feel, you know, what some side effects are that you may or may not experience. And the biggest thing is, like I said, if you're getting good results from that low amount, stick with that low amount and then ride it out. There's no sense in taking more if you're already getting good results on a low amount because a lower amount means a less chance of side effects. It means a less chance at doing harm to your body or causing any type of health effects or anything like that. So this is all just information for you guys to consider before you dive into SARMs so that you have it with you in your arsenal. Now, here's my one gripe about SARMs. I did a video on TikTok for all of my followers over there not too long ago about this. My one gripe about SARMs is that a lot of you guys are considering using SARMs to avoid needles. And while that's all fun, I understand the reason why you would want to avoid needles. You have to understand that there's going to be a pretty significant chance that using SARMs is going to end up putting you on needles at some point down the road eventually. Because like I said in the beginning of this video, SARMs will directly impact your natural production of testosterone. And eventually, that may lead to you being on testosterone, which isn't a bad thing. I personally think that you should be on testosterone or TRT and then use SARMs in addition to that as an extra tool to help you meet the goals that you're trying to meet. But if you're someone who's a natural athlete and you want to use SARMs, first of all, SARMs will make it so that you are not natural anymore. So let's just make sure that everyone understands that. If you're planning to compete in a natural bodybuilding show, they will be able to test you for these SARMs at some point or in some capacity. Then if you test positive for them, you're not going to be able to compete in a natural bodybuilding show. 
Now, what will happen from it directly impacting your natural production is that you're gonna eventually get tired of your testosterone levels going up, coming down, going up, coming down, and you're eventually just gonna get on TRT. So make sure that when you get on SARMs and you use SARMs, you're using them with that thought in the back of your mind, okay? Don't think that just because you use SARMs, you're never gonna be you know, needing testosterone or injecting testosterone, because in most cases, people that start with SARMs almost always end up at least on TRT minimum because TRT is gonna be very beneficial when you're using SARMs in addition to that to enhance the goals that you're trying to achieve. So I just wanna get that part out of the way. A lot of people think SARMs are just an easy gateway to avoid needles, avoid all this stuff, and be able to get progress and, and meet their goals. And while yes, that's true, just remember that starting with SARMs will possibly lead you to the road of using anabolics, at least at a TRT prescription amount, okay? So something to consider before you decide to move forward and press that buy button. Something else to consider when it comes to you athletes out there, there's gonna be a lot of you guys that are maybe college athletes that are trying to play college sports. And you may think that SARMs are a good way to get involved at growing and getting stronger and things like that because you think maybe they won't test you for them. Listen, you guys, any athlete at a collegiate level regardless of what sport you're playing, will possibly get tested for these things. They can test you for SARMs and they will most likely test you for SARMs at that level. If you pop positive for any type of SARMs at a collegiate level during a college sport, there is a huge chance that you are going to throw your entire career away. They're gonna see that just like they can see anabolics and they're going to suspend you or even worse, remove you from the team entirely. I don't wanna see that happen. Now, the chances of that can be kind of small, but I wanna mention it because it depends on what level you're playing at. If you're playing at a level that is testing you for performance enhancing drugs, please understand, they can see these. And if they do see them, you're gonna be SOL, which in layman's terms means shit out of luck. Don't say, I didn't warn you. Pilots, if you're a commercial airline pilot, there is a chance that they will test you for these things too, all right? Everybody else, if you're a factory worker, if you just you know work in, you know, just a random job, your automotive mechanic, I don't know, like anything, carpenter, whatever. When it comes to most of the blue collar jobs, they're not gonna test you for SARMs, just like they're not gonna test you for steroids. They're looking for other types of street drugs, right? But I just wanna mention those two things. There are probably some other things out there as well that would you know, qualify you to be tested for these things. Just know that the tests do exist and they can see them. But in most cases, for most jobs, they're not gonna test you for these things or even care if you're using them, okay? I just wanna throw that out there because I get a lot of college athletes that ask me if they can get away with using MK short-term or RAD140 short-term. And while you probably could get away with it using it short-term, there's still gonna be a chance that you'll pop positive. And is it worth popping positive and throwing your whole career away just to get a little bit stronger when you could've just ate food and gave it a little more time? In my opinion, no, but your opinion might be different. I just wanna mention it so that that way you guys, again, have the best information that I can possibly give you. I want to be as honest as I can about these things because even though I do sell these things and I do own the company, I want you guys to have the proper information because I only want people using these things that are fully educated, that understand exactly what they're doing so that they don't hurt themselves and they have somewhat of an idea uh, of where to go and direction to go. The last thing I'm going to mention about SARMs for this video that you guys need to consider. I see a lot of times where people are like, I didn't get anything from SARMs, they don't work, they don't this, they don't that. It's not true, the, the research will definitely show you that. However, I find that the biggest problem is there's a lot of companies making these things, but there are not a lot of companies that are not only paying to have their products third-party tested, but they're not showing you the third-party testing results either. So a lot of companies can claim that they do third-party testing, but then if they're not showing you the third party testing results, then they're hiding something, okay? Or they're not doing the testing in any capacity, which means you have no idea of the purity that's going to be inside of your bottle. Now, I don't think companies are necessarily out here trying to scam people, I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying is, is that there are manufacturers that manufacture for those brands that are out here trying to scam people without even really honestly realizing it because where they're getting the raws from to make these things are not pure and they're not testing it, okay? So 
I just want to make that clear. Make sure that whatever company you're going to support, even if it's not mine, that the company is doing third party testing in some capacity. Even if it's not the company, as long as their manufacturer is doing the third party testing, then at least you can get the results and see them. We third party test all of our products at the moment that we receive them, okay? Do we get them in, we send them off for third party testing and we update that third party testing as needed based on batches and you know things that are you know in our control. My manufacturer I've been doing business with for over four years before I even started my own brand of SARMs. So I know that they're a good company. They always take really good care of me, which in turn allows me to take very good care of you guys and trust the products myself before I even put them out. Because if I don't trust the product, I will not sell that product. It's not about money for me. I just want you guys to have a very easy, accessible place to get things like this that you can trust if you decide to do it. Now, if all of this is like, yeah, bro, sounds good, sign me up, then Heads of my store, all right? The link to this is gonna be in the description below, performancelabs.com. Make sure you guys put a Z at the end of the word labs, okay? L-A-B-Z, performancelabs.com. You guys are gonna be able to grab any of this stuff that you guys want, including we have an amazing pre-workout, we have some creatine and we have some stickers, we have all kinds of other goodies, some shirts and things like that as well, some hats on that website. And if you guys use code TikTok10, it's gonna give you guys 10% off your entire order, all right? on everything besides bundle deals because those are already massively discounted but we do have bundle deals with different types of things in there as well we have stacks we have single compounds we have liquids we have capsules we have everything you guys need all right performancelabs.com code tiktok 10 is going to give you guys that 10 percent discount and we're going to ship these items anywhere in the united states we do not ship into other countries because customs sometimes gives us nothing but a headache and i don't want you guys to deal with that headache but if you're in the united states and you're looking for an honest reputable place i would be forever grateful if you would consider my my company as being one of the options that you look into. I love you guys, I appreciate this. I really hope that this video gives you guys a little bit of the inside scoop and some things to consider when you're just getting started. Make sure you guys always do as much research as possible and you fully understand what you're getting into, especially compound by compound, and you understand what that compound's gonna do, how it's gonna make you feel, and some things to look out for. If you guys have any questions about this, make sure you drop them down in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to come in and answer them for you so I can clear some things up, all right? I love you guys. I'll see you soon on the next video.